Hi everyone! In today's video, we're going to code the Graph Ignition Network using DGL Library. We will also go into see how the data flows inside the Graph Ignition Layer. So let's get into it. So before I start talking about the code, I just want to talk about Graph Neural Network Libraries. Should you use Python Geometric or DGL? The answer is simple. Both. Because if you look into NVIDIA GPU Cloud, and you, you see the Containers Catalog, NVIDIA is packaging and maintaining a container for Python Geometric and a container for DGL. So if NVIDIA didn't pick one over the other, why should you? I mean they package and maintain these containers because there are so many AI teams that use both libraries. And if, if you are familiar with the Graph and Neural Networks concepts, it shouldn't be a problem learning both libraries. It's a matter of just uh, how, how both libraries are packaging the graph, how, what data types are using. The concepts are the same, but the implementation in, this, in the code is different. Some papers are implemented in DGL, but are not implemented in PyTorch, Geometric. So it's, uh, it would be easier for you to learn both and move back and forth, depending on your, uh, what do you, wh uh, which method you want to apply. So here is the start of the code. Uh, I want to acknowledge the help of these two references. First one is the official examples and modules by DGL, specifically this example, the graph attention network example. They, I borrowed some code from this file here, train.py. Basically, I borrowed this class and uh, functions for an evaluate and train. And let's have a look at the graph attention layer in DGL. So this is the graph attention layer in DGL. So it's basically trying to apply this formula here. This formula is equivalent to equation number four in the original graph attention paper. HI is the feature vector for the node I in the new layer. This is the new representation for the node I. The weight of the current layer multiplied by the feature vectors of the nodes J. The nodes J are the neighbors of the node I. So we are aggregating the feature vectors of the neighbors. We're multiplying by the weight of the current layer and we're multiplying by the attention coefficient. This will give us the new representation, the new feature vector for the node i in the next layer. So the attention coefficient is the weight matrix multiplied by the feature vector for the node j, and the weight matrix multiplied by the feature vector of the node i. Then we applied Likiri log. It's This formula here is basically equation number three in the paper. So the, the fraction here is just the softmax. The softmax, this one here, the softmax is basically the fraction. The numerator is the node j, and the denominator, it is normalized by all the neighbors of the node i, which is the softmax. Now let's look at the source code of the graph attention layer in DGL. Here is the source code. Let's jump to the forward function. Here's the forward function. It takes a graph, features, and a flag, whether to return the attention attention uh, values or not. So it returns a torch tensor, which is the new representations for the next layer. It is of size, batch size, number of hits, and the features, the new features. And if this flag, this attention flag is set to true, it will return the attention values. Here they are computing EL, I guess it's uh, edge left. Uh, I guess this is the naming for for this variable. So it's basically the feature uh, the so, uh, the the features of the source node, which is i, multiplied by the attention left. So this is equivalent to this part here in the documentation. And er, I think it's edge right. So it's the features for the destination node multiplied by the attention right. This is the this quantity here. Then they compute the edge attention. So EL is basically AL and WI, and ER is AR and WJ. Then they apply a leaky relo and a softmax. So they applied this function here, leaky relo and a softmax. Then after that, they apply a message passing. Here at this part, they multi they they update the graph with a with a message passing. This part here, 
Now let's get back to the code. Here are the peptic entries for uh, the DB graph library and paper and graph attention networks paper. I'm installing DGL and importing libraries. And here is the architecture for the graph attention network. Basically, it's two layers. This is the first layer, and this is the second layer. The first layer takes the input features and it outputs the hidden features using number of hits that we enter in the parameters. It applies a feature drop and attention drops and the activation is ELO. The second graph attention layer takes the hidden features multiplied by the number of hits because we are concatenating these features and it outputs the output features which is the number of classes. Using the number of hits that we pass in the parameters, it applies feature drop, attention drop, and no activation. So the forward function H is the input and this for loop enumerates over the layers, which is basically two layers, and it passes the, the graph and the features to the layer and prepares the new representations. And if it's not the last layer, it will concatenate the features from different attention heads. And if it is the last layer, it will perform averaging over the, uh, over the attention heads. I have my notes here just to see how the data flows inside graph attention layers. So, for example, we're, uh, in, this, in this notebook, we're using Cora dataset, which is 2,708 samples. They have 1,433 features. So the samples are documents, the features are bag of words, and the adjacency matrix represents the citation links between different documents. So we're passing a two-dimensional array of size 2,708 by 1,433 to the first graph attention layer. We will get a three-dimensional array of size 2,708. The second dimension is eight, and the third dimension is eight. So what are these dimensions represent? The first dimension is the batch size, which we are passing the whole data set as one batch. We're using full batch here. The second dimension, this dimension, is the number of heads. And the third dimension is the hidden features. So each one of these heads computed eight features. Then we are concatenating these eight features to make a two-dimensional array of size 2708 by 64. So this is the output of the first graph attention layer. I just want to explain this layer more here. So we have eight heads that calculated if you, you know what I, I should have I should have used different number for the features. This is confusing. A anyways, so eight heads, each head has computed eight features using this formula from the uh, from equation four in the graph attention paper. The weights multiplied by the neighbor of the node I to compute the new representation for the node I. So all the eight heads have computed these eight features using this formula. And we are concatenating these features to make a two-dimensional array of 64 features. So the hidden features are 64. So we might ask, why concatenating, not averaging? In the graph attention paper here, they said the new representation, the output of different heads. Here we have a purple line, a blue line, and a green line representing three different attention heads. So you can either perform concatenation or averaging. In the first graph attention layer, we performed concatenation, and in the second graph attention layer, we performed averaging. But why concatenating, not averaging in the first graph attention layer? The intuition behind concatenation is that similar nodes will be assigned similar features by different heads. If we average across multiple heads, we will lose this valuable information. Let's say we have two documents, two samples from Cora dataset, they have similar features and they have so many edges connecting them. So these two documents documents are very similar. When we pass these two documents to different attention heads, they should, they should assign similar features because these documents are similar. If we average these features, we, we will lose this information. So we want to concatenate the features for each attention head and pass along these features to the final graph attention layer. But in the final graph attention layer, our goal is to detect the class. So we're taking the mean over multiple attention heads. So this two-dimensional array will be the output of the first graph attention layer, and we will pass it to the second graph attention layer to get this three-dimensional array of size 2,000 samples, 2,700 samples by one by seven. So the first dimension is the batch size, which is the number of samples we're using for batch. 
And the second dimension is the number of heads for, this, for the final gravitational layer, we're using one head. And the output features are the number of classes, seven classes. So the logits are the mean over multiple heads, but we are using only one head. So it, it's basically we're eliminating this dimension here. And the logits will be of size 2700 and the second dimension is seven. Here the evaluate function, it will set the model to evaluate and it will get the logits from the model, it will get the logits and the labels, and it calculates the accuracy. The train function takes the train mask, the validation mask, and it sets the loss function to process entropy, and it initializes the optimizer. And for the number of epochs which we are passing here, the model will set to train, we'll get the logits from the model, we'll compute the loss, backwarding, we are computing the accuracy using the evaluate function here. So here I'm, uh, here I'm importing Cora dataset using Cora graph dataset function from a DGL library. And uh, the transform will be adding self loop. Adding self loop is just adding the identity matrix to the ITC matrix. So the graph will be the first graph, uh, will be the first graph in the data. So Cora dataset has uh, 2,700 nodes and the number of pages is almost 10,000 and the number of features is 1,400. The number of classes are seven classes. And when, when we are initializing the model to n size, which is the number of features, eight is the number of hidden features, and out size is the number of classes. For the heads who are passing a list, the first gravitational layer will get eight heads, and the second gravitational layer will get one head. So here is, here is the training, we're passing the graph, features, the labels, and masks, and we're getting 80% accuracy on the training set. For the testing set, we're getting 82% accuracy on the testing set. That's it guys for today's video. If you find this video helpful, please like and subscribe. By the way, you can find uh, a link to the notebook I'm working on in the description below. Thanks for watching. Bye.